Hello and welcome to tonight's webinar. Once again, I'm so happy that you're here on this Thursday. Once again, I'm your host, Sterling McKinley, and this webinar is presented by the good folks at the U.S. Black Chambers and also the good folks at Growth Google. So once again, thank you for the time for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us here again. Tonight we have one hour, and tonight we're talking about email marketing and how you can use email marketing to make more sales online. So once again, this webinar is all about you. It's not about me. It's about me answering your questions and your comments. So feel free anytime during the webinar just to chime in, type in the chat box, let me know what you would like me to answer. So saying that, let's get started. So once again, this is part two. Uh, we had a webinar last week, which was part one email marketing. But tonight, we're really going to get into how you can collect emails, addresses, and how you can use uh, tools like um, MailChimp and also Constant Contact to also send emails to your prospects and your customers. So as always, I'll like to check in and to make sure you're here with me. So if you are ready to learn more about email marketing, type in open rate. <laughs> Once again, if you're ready to learn more about email marketing, Type in open rate. If you're ready to get started, type in open rate. And I'll tell you why I'm asking you to type in open rate. One, because it's all about interaction. It's all about engagement. And that's one thing too, I want you to remember in your digital marketing and email marketing. It's all about having that communication with your audience. It's once again, it's all about them and not about you. So, hey, Tracy, good to see you back again. Tracy says open rate. Uh, Kimberly says open rate. Great. <laughs> so thanks for chiming in. So I say open rep because tonight, that's what we're focusing on. You know, it's okay to send out emails, but at the end of the day, you want to send emails out to get open and they get read and that they read the email and it costs them to take action, to sign up for a service, a free uh, PDF, for free seminar, something like that. So the whole point of sending email is to have a good open rate. And tonight we're going to talk about ways that you can have a good open rate. So what do I mean when I say open rate? So you have your phone right here. We all get emails throughout the day. We get texts, everything. So open rate is when somebody sees your email on their phone, they click on it. That's the open rate. But Let's take a step back. What makes somebody click on your phone and open an email? One, you have a good subject line. That's the first thing that pulls them in. So tonight, we're going to talk about that. We could talk about how you can send emails and how you can make people open your emails even more because at the end of the day, that's what you want. You want somebody to get your email, to open your email, and then take an action. So that's what we all are talking about tonight. So let's get back to the slides. Okay, so our agenda is pretty simple. First, we're going to take a step back. And once again, we're going to define exactly what email marketing is. Email marketing has been around for so long. Once again, I want to make sure you have a firm understanding exactly what email marketing is. Next, we're going to talk about how you can build an email list. So. Hopefully you already have one, but if you don't, we're going to talk about ways that you can build an email list. And then last to close out, we're going to talk about email marketing software. And when I say that, we're not talking about sending a mass email through Gmail, which is, which is fine. I love Gmail, but no, you want to invest in email software like um, MailChimp or Constant Contact. That is a more professional way more efficient way to send emails to your customers. So we're gonna talk about that, and I'm gonna give you a live walkthrough of MailChimp, how you set it up, how you import contacts, and how you compose the email message. Okay, so a question again for the class, uh, for the audience. What is email marketing? Once again, type in the chat box in the comments, what is email marketing? Once again, what is email marketing? What does it mean to you? Just type that answer in the chat box and then we'll talk about it. Oh, 
Okay, Tracy has a comment. Tracy says, uh, a strategy to market your company B email. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's a pretty good for answer. Uh, anybody else want to take a stab at what's email marketing? Well, I'll move for it, but uh, Tracy, you got it. A strategy to market your company via email. You, you got it. And, you know, I think about email marketing. There are so many to market your business. So many ways, so many vehicles, social media, your website, video, email, and so on. But we'll talk about more tonight. But email marketing is one of the best ways to market your business. Why? Because it's direct. Think about social media, it's very busy. There are a lot of things going on, but email is that direct communication where you can talk directly to your client. And that's why it's so important. And also email allows you to build that, that, that bond, that relationship with your clients. So over time you're talking to them and then eventually they respond hopefully, or they buy your product, your service. But email, yes, I say it's that OG <laughs> marketing tactic um, that's been around for years, but it still works. So. I don't want you to um, uh, not give email marketing the respect you need because it still works and it can be a great way to grow your business. So getting back to the slides, uh, let me give you the textbook definition. And it's similar to what Tracy said, she hit it on, on, on the head. So email marketing uses email to promote your business and your services. That's it. It's about promoting your business products and business services. Simple as that. That's all email marketing is. So it's not something that you should be afraid of or on the fence. Trust me, email marketing works. Email marketing is a great way to make more sales for your business. And I have a stat here that really brings it home. Okay, it says email marketing generates $42 for every dollar spent which is a 4,000% return on investment. Let me say it again. For every dollar you spend on email, you make $42 back. Now, I don't know if any stock, any investment, anything that has a better return on investment than that. So once again, here's just more proof that email marketing works. And once again, it's a low cost, highly um, effective way to reach your customers and potential uh, customers as well. So let's break down once again, what is the anatomy of email? So basically there's three main parts to talk about tonight. First, the subject line. And that is the most important part because if you have a bad subject line, the person is not gonna open the email. So we started off talking about open rate. That determines the open rate. Is your subject line engaging? Does it give the reader a reason to click on your email and open it? Next, we'll talk about the body. And the body is also very important. That's where you have your message. That's where you're telling your customer, your client, what you want them to do. And the last part is having a call to action. So you see here at the bottom, it says, keep reading. So you're sending email for, for a reason. Do you want me to sign up for a webinar? Do you want me to download a free PDF? Having a call to action is letting the person know what do you want them to do. You're not just sending an email to say hi. <laughs> You're sending an email for a reason. Be sure to tell the person why you were sending an email to them. Okay, do a favor. I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking now. So uh, if what I'm saying is good to you, what I'm saying is helpful so far, do me a favor and hit the like button. Uh, and also, uh, just type in like in the chat box. So if this is good to you, type like in the chat box or just hit that like button and let me know if you are liking what, what I'm saying. <laughs> in many ways, this is the call to action. So once again, I'm letting you know what I want you to do. So this uh, webinar is helpful, insightful smash hit that like button or just type in like in the chat box so once again you see that i asked you to do something and then you did it if i didn't ask you to do it you wouldn't do it so once again that's why it's so important to have a strong call to action in your email so tracy says like yes thank you tracy <laughs> so what we're talking about now is how you can pick the right subject line for your email and once again, this is the most important part because when I'm scrolling through my phone, 
all my thousands of emails and notifications, that uh, subject line, the thing I see, it's the thing that's going to make me click on that and open the email up. So here are some examples of good subject lines. Uh, the first one says, today only, get this now before it's gone. So that's what we call creating a sense of urgency. You want to tell people, hey, this is a deal expiring. We want you to open the email now. So you can say today only, tonight only, ending at midnight, something like that. But putting a time on something makes it more urgent and it causes the person to not want to lose out and make them want to click on that email and read what the offer is. Next one says, Sam, you don't want to miss this. So what this is called, this is called the personalized email subject line. So one thing that always works is including the recipient's name and the subject line. Once again, because people love to, for things to be personalized. They love to hear their name or see their name. So if I send an email to Tracy and it says, Tracy, you don't want to miss this. Guess what? Tracy is going to be more likely to open an email. Why? Because it has her name in there because it's personal. And also, people are getting tired of getting spam, getting mass emails, everything. When something is personal, it stands out. And the person is going to be more likely to open that email. The next one, it says, your favorite jeans are 20% off. So this is getting to more and more of a sell. So if you're having a sell or a discount, you can say 20% off, 30% off, half off. Once again, those kind of things get people on that sell mode. Like, hey, I need to click on this link and take advantage of the offer. Uh, the next one says, spring into this deal, ready, set, glow. So what this email is doing, it is using the time of year as a hook. So think about it, you, you have spring, you have summer, you have winter, you have fall, you have certain holidays. Anytime you can try to in, insert something that's relevant to your um, customers. So uh, right now we could say, um, fall into savings because fall is coming up uh pretty soon there's gonna be the holiday coming up we can say holiday savings so anything that you can do to make your email more timely of uh, the better and it can be more than holidays it can be something in industry let's say you're a uh, cpa and you do taxes well, great well you can say april is coming and to anybody on the business they know what that means april is coming let's get ready for tax season so insert a, a season, a certain event, uh, insert a holiday, insert some kind of recurring thing uh, in their business that may catch their eye. Uh, and next is a question. So this says, um, is that your lucky day? Simple question. So asking a question is a good way to get an open rate. So I can say, Tracy, are you ready to lose more weight <laughs> or whatever it is? Tracy, are you ready to get more money? Asking a question, make the person think, oh, am I ready? Let me click to find out. So there are many ways to send emails, but these are some of the um, most used ways. So once again, first, using the time, using a sense of urgency. Uh, next, personalizing an email. So saying Sam, saying Tracy. Next, offering a, a sell percentage off. Uh, next, using uh, the time of year, the season, and event in your email. And the last one is asking a question. Those are some simple ways that you can have a more effective subject line that's going to get more opens. Okay, so we're going now to the body of the email. And this is also very important because you can have the best subject line in the world. But if I click the email and I come and I read the email and it's trash, I'm going to leave. So once you have the hook, the carrot, you get that person. Now it's time to really sell them. So I'm going to give you some advice on writing a good uh, body. First one is you want to begin with a greeting. So hello, Tom. Hello, Susan. Good evening. Something like that. Uh, you want to state your purpose. I'm emailing you because or this or that. So get right to it. You know, this is not the time to be long winded. No, it should be very short to the point. Less than 100 words, but get to the point. Tell them what is your purpose. Uh, next, have your um, closing remarks. Tell them what do you want them to do and have a closing. So your body should be really to the point. Once again, introduce yourself, say hi, 
tell them why you email them and then close it out. Simple as that. But email is a kind of a short form thing. Email shouldn't be this long book they have to read. No, think about it. Most emails are open on phones. So they have very little space to see a message. So 100, 200 words max, something they can scan very quickly and something they can click a button easily and find out more about that. So you don't have to get everything into your email. It should be just kind of a, a preview in a sense. And then if they want to, they can click a button, go to your website and learn more information. And the last portion is having a call to action. So in your call to action, you want to use action words. You want to tell them what you want them to do. So once again, that's going to be a button. That can be a link to say shop now. It can say learn more. It can say reserve your spot. It can say try it for free. But a quick subject, a quick call to action tells them what they want to do. And normally the call to action is in the color that stands out. So um, if you have a, a button, it will be a red button, a green button, an orange button. You want to make it stand out. Um, and you want to make it so they can click on that button and they can go to your website, social media, YouTube, anywhere and find out more about what you're talking about. So you want to have a very strong call to action. So uh, how am I doing so far? <laughs> Once again, I want to check in to make sure you're still here. So uh, this is the helpful. Give me a five. If this is so-so, give me a zero or a one. So let me know. Um, is this webinar being helpful to you? If so, uh, type in five. If not, just type in a one. So <laughs> I want to know how I how I'm doing. Tracy, always coming through with the six. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Anybody else? Feel free to chime in. And once again, I'll say this: um, we have a little bit of time left. But once again, this webinar is all about you. So your questions, your comments are key. And also, what challenges are you having with email marketing? Now is the time to ask those because I'm here to answer your questions. So let me know what uh, questions you have. And Kimberly says five. Appreciate that. All right, so let's move on. Now I'm going to go on to the next topic is how to build an email list. And... This is something I think that's very um, important because if you don't have an email list, you need to learn how to build one. And even if you do have one, your email list should be constantly growing. You constantly should be updating it with new and fresh emails. So in this section, we're going to go through some tactics and strategies to where you can help build your email list. Because once again, don't be uh, ashamed that you have a small email list. If it's five, that's great. If it's 10, 20, if it's 100 more, but all you really need is a good 100, 200 email addresses, good customers, and you can use those to make money. So don't think you need to have this large email list to start off. No, start small, start what you have, and if you keep doing it, if you follow some of these strategies that I'm giving you, I believe over time that emails will grow larger and larger, but once again, don't be afraid to start small. Start with one email <laughs> and start growing from there and keep going. So don't think uh, it's all about having the biggest or largest email list. All right, so tip one is to use an embedded sign-up form on your website. So if you have a website, uh, you can, uh, if you're using WordPress or one of those softwares, there's no many ways you can embed um, an email signup list into your website. So what happens is when somebody comes to the website, um, five or two seconds will pass and then you get this pop up and it'll say some kind of offer, something simple about learn more, uh, sign up for the sale. So that's one way uh, to get an email list. On your website, um, you have uh, some kind of pop up or some kind of form on the side of the site where they can easily put in their name, uh, their email, and they can sign up for your email list. So once again, using your email, uh, using your website to get emails is the easy way to do that. Um, and also too, um, if you have a contact us form on your website, that's a way also to get email. So anybody that sends you an email, a question or a comment, they can be on your, on your email as well. And normally 
right under the form, there's a little checkbox that says, sign me up to be on the email list. So make sure that's on every form on your website that when somebody is sending you an email um, for a regular contact, that you're asking them if it's okay for you to sign them up for your email newsletter. That's the easy way to get email. So what happens is you can make your email uh, customer service. That's a great way. So when somebody sends you a customer service email or a complaint or a praise, use that in, in your email list as well. If you can, ask for permission first before you add them to the list. But a lot of uh, email um, can take the form of just being customer service. And that's a great, a simple way to do uh, email and get more emails uh, for your business. The next one is a referral program. So you may have seen this on other sites and it'll say refer a friend. So uh, what happens is, is like this, a box pops up. It has um, uh, the person's uh, name box for that, their, their email and so on. And you put that in and what, what it does is it's saying, hey, let's say I signed up for this service to buy shoes. Well, I have a friend who loves to buy shoes. Let me put in their email address, send this to them. And then that's one way that you can also get email addresses. So um, asking a client for a referral. So it doesn't have to be a pop-up form on your website. You can simply ask your, ask your customers, hey, do you have any like-minded friends or family or colleagues that may like my service? If so, would you mind giving me their email and I email them? And the email will say, hey, Tracy, Monica said you would love this product and go from there. So once again, you can use your current customer base to get more emails because chances are your customers know other people that will also like your product and your service. So you can use your current customers to get more emails. So once again, the way to do that is a referral service. And maybe you give a, a client a discount if they refer somebody to you. Maybe you give them a free download or something like that. But once again, if you do a good job, if you have a good product, good service, I believe that clients are more inclined to refer people to you. Uh, and once again, a simple way to do that is just ask for the referral. Ask for that name, ask for the email. Get that email, put it into your software and start sending that person emails. It's just that simple. Another way is uh, in store. So if you have a brick and mortar store, this is old school, but you see the image here, you can have a sign up sheet right by your cash register <laughs> so when somebody comes um uh into the into the store they can sign up right there um with their um they can sign up right there with the email address um i've seen some store if you go inside uh there's a uh, a fishbowl or a bucket um by the uh, register and it says to win a free lunch or to win a free consultation drop in your business card that's a free service, but that's the way to collect email addresses. Now, at the end of a month, that person goes into that that box they had sitting on the uh, cashier um, register. They open it up, and they have 30 business cards. That's one way also to gain um, email addresses. So once again, when you have that person in your store or you're at an event, that is a perfect time to well hold your clipboard Say, hey, do you want to learn more about this? Do you want a free sample of survey? Hey, give me your email address and I'll sign you up. So once again, that's a simple way to uh, get the email in person. Um, it's a very easy way to uh, get email. Um, Kizzy, hey, thanks for joining us again. Kizzy says, I love referrals. My agency is 95% referral basis. Yeah, uh, email refer referrals are big. Referrals are, are really big. Um, once again, my business too is also very big on referrals. So that's why I make sure I do such a good job um, for, for my customers and clients. Like right now, the U.S. Black Chambers. Every week I'm on here, I'm, I'm answering questions. I have good quality audio lighting. Why? Because I want to do such a good job when my contract ends, that customer says, hey, you know what? You did a great job. Let's sign up again. Or, hey, you know what? Here's a similar company organization that may like your services. So yeah, kids, you got uh, referrals or easy way to go. And, you know, in business, we spend so much time on marketing and getting customers. I always say to me, it's amazing. Uh, people get customers, 
and then they don't call them again. They don't email them again. So email also is a good way, Kizzy, to stay in contact with your past customers because yes, they may not need you now or tomorrow or next week, but at some time they're going to need you. And by sending emails, that kind of way you kind of just stay in their mind. So when they see you, oh, now I need that service. Let me call Kizzy for that service and she can help me. So once again, that 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 is huge. And, you know, I always think that car dealerships do a terrible job with this. You buy a car, you spend twenty, thirty thousand to buy a car. Um, the person is your best friend. But as soon as you buy a car, you're off the lot. You never hear from them again. That makes no sense. Here's what are the next five, seven, ten years, you're going to need a car again. So a smart company would stay in contact with their clients, even via email, something that's so easy. So guess what? When it comes time to buy that car again, they're thinking about your dealership and they come back to you. And once again, email marketing is the easy way they could stay on your customer's mind. Kizzy says, this is a great idea. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Referrals, the way to go. Definitely. Um, Kizzy, a lot of comments here. Kizzy says, yes, follow-up emails is where that. Yeah, I get it. it the the follow-up. You already, They already bought from you once. They're ready to buy from you again. But the way you can do that is by staying in touch. Staying in touch with that customer. Because my customers, sometimes they get tired of me. I'm sending emails to you everywhere. Hey, how you doing? How things are going? I'm sending gift cards from time to time. Say, hey, thank you for your um your your business. I can't wait to work for you again. Staying in contact is the way to go. You know, it's tiring. It's expensive to get new customer again and again. But if you can reach the same customer, that is the way to go. All right, let's get back to the webinar. We have about a half hour to go, so um, let's get back to it. Um, the next one is using your email signature. Social media on flyer. So I believe anything that leaves your business should always have um, your email address on it and your web plate on it. So once again, your email signature, social media flyers, always have your email on there. Always have invitation to follow us on LinkedIn, follow us on Facebook, sign up for our email list. So anything that leaves your business, whether it's virtual or whether it's physical, it should have um, your social media links and also um, an offer to sign up for your email list. And the last one I just said is ask your customers. At the end of the day, you already have an email list. You just have to ask for it. So simply ask your current customers, hey, would you mind being on my email list? Hey, would you mind referring uh, like-minded customers to my business? That's the easiest way to simply ask. On social media, you can ask for email addresses by doing a contest. Hey, um, uh, send me your, your email um, in a DM and the first 10 people will get discount on the service. Be creative about it. But it's one of those things, again, you have to be creative about the way that you ask. And also when you ask, make sure that you're offering value. Because uh, the day I was in the store and I bought, um, I don't know, what, what I bought, candy bar. And I said, oh, sir, do you want to sign up your email list? And I said, no. I said, I'm getting enough emails. <laughs> so if you ask for an email, make sure that you're providing value to that customer because, you know, everybody now is trying to get emails and what you don't want to be is another one of those people that emails and you end up in the spam box. You end up having your email deleted. So make sure when you send emails that they're providing value for your customers. All right, so let's check in again. I'm doing a good job. Uh, just smash, hit that like button, uh, and let me know if I'm doing a good job. Um, also, give me a rating. Type in five if I'm doing great. Type in one if I'm doing okay. But uh, the more likes, the better. <laughs> and once again, just like me, you have to ask your customers for what you want. They're not just going to give you the email address. You have to ask for it. You're just not going to hit the like button on Facebook or YouTube. I have to ask for you to hit the like button. So once again, if you're liking what I'm saying, just hit that like button. Okay, let's get back to the presentation. All right, so moving on now to the fun part, uh, email marketing software. So we are going to review um, a few, well, actually one, 
uh, software. Uh, my favorite software uh, is MailChimp. So uh, quick question for the class. Um, for those of you that do uh, use email marketing, let me know what email marketing software are you using or you thought about using. So it can be Chipmail, it can be, sorry, MailChimp, it can be Constant Contact. Let me know what email marketing service, excuse me, you are currently using. Kizzy says, let me get this, Flowdesk? Okay, I'm not for, too familiar with that, but uh, once again, on on her same point, there are so many uh, email marketing software out there. So I'm going with the two kind of most popular commercial ones, which are MailChimp and Content Contact. But there's so many ways to uh, um, send email, and it really depends on the features, uh, the pricing, and what you want to do. So. Let's first let's uh, check out uh, check out Mailchimp. Okay, so um, Tracy says she's been using uh, thinking about Cloud IQ. Okay, um, I haven't heard that before, um, but I'm sure that's that's a good email um, service to use. So um, yeah, and what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take you through Mailchimp and. Really, most of the email marketing software out there, they're pretty similar. Um, you know, you sign up for an account, you upload your email list. Uh, once you do that, you um, you can uh, create an email template. Uh, you design your email template and you schedule to send it out. And when you send it out, in a week or two, you look at your analytics and you see what was your open rate uh, the people respond and so on. So all email um, services are very uh, similar. So a lot of things I showed at night that will apply to whatever email software you use. Uh, Tree says, I think it's free through Google. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. I haven't heard of um, Cloud um, HQ before, but once again, there are so many different uh, email marketing softwares out there, um, but they are all very similar. So this, um, run through i'm gonna give a mailchimp should kind of cover some of the questions you have but once again tracy and, and kizzy anybody else if you have any questions about email marketing or challenges be sure to ask those now and i'll definitely uh, respond to you so this is mailchimp uh right here uh you see the site is uh pretty pretty simple it says reach your customers at all the right moments um scroll down some more tell us more about mailchimp um, this is kind of what I'm talking about right here. This is kind of a sample of the email uh, marketing template, a store actually. Uh, then here's some more, and give you some more information. So um, let's, um, well, before we, uh, I'm gonna log in, because I already have an account, but I'll show you the first step is the pricing. So uh, Tracy just said that Cloud HQ is free um, but there is a cost to a lot of software uh, out there. Um, so this is uh, MailChimp. Uh, to get started, if you have under 2,000 contacts, it's totally free. So I always say, if you can get any service that's free, definitely start with that service because free always works. But normally, the bigger your email list is, the more you pay. So uh, MailChimp is pretty affordable, so they go from $9.00. Um, all the way up to uh, fourteen dollars, so very uh, affordable. Um, so if you want to get started using email marketing, it literally costs nothing. Um, Mailchimp is free forever. If you have under two thousand contacts, which will be most companies, um, and also a lot of other software, uh, they have a thirty day trial where you can kind of sign up, uh, send an email, and see if it fits your needs. And I uh, see they also have a premium service here if you have over 10,000 contacts as well. So, um, yeah, but once again, just say just the cause of the email is, is very simple. So, you know, if you had five, if you had a lot of contacts, what's $10 a month? What's $15 a month? What's 50? That's nothing. You know, if you're making a few sales from an email. So once again, the, the cost and the benefit of email marketing, I think you're always going to win because it is a low, low cost way to market your business and market your service. So let's go back to the homepage here and we're going to log in uh, 
in my account I already have. So this is kind of step one. If you if you will log in or sign up, and of course you put in your your busy information and things like that. This is kind of what what you would see. Uh, so when you come into to Mailchimp or any software, there's gonna be a, a section that says audience or email list, and this is a section where you can um, upload um, your email list. Um, yes, thank you. Great insight. <laughs> I'm glad you, I'm glad you found this helpful. So to do that, um, your email list has to be in a, an Excel file. Uh, so let me show you that real quick. I'm sure you already know this, but let me just show you um, how, how it works. Um, so what we talked about last month, this is Google Sheets. And Google Sheets is basically Excel, but it's with the Google. Um, so uh, let's um, use this one example. So you want to upload your contacts, uh, not as a cell file, but as a, um, I believe a CVS file. So if you're on um, Sheets, if you're using Excel, know if you go under File and you scroll down to Download, you want to choose this, comma separated values or a CSV file. If you click that, it will download, you can name it whatever, hit save, and download your desktop. Um, so when you're getting email from clients, be sure to enter them in this um, kind of a Excel file. And it's simple. You can have the client's first name right here, the last name here, and the email address right here. And this way, when you upload the email list onto MailChimp or the software, It'll go through automatically and be able to read and create a uh, a contact list for each one of those clients, each one of those customers. So let's go back to Mailchimp and let's hit import contacts, and it's going to open up um, uh, your computer once again. We're using a CSV file. Hit continue to upload, and we hit browse. And I already saved the. Uh, um, list of my own for you. So let's choose this, this one right here. Let's hit uh, open and hit continue to organize. And then it should upload all of our emails. And all right, let me pause and say one thing too. So um, anybody's thinking too about doing email let me give you some caution. So one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to buy email list. Like I said, you want to be organic. You want to grow that list by using your website or asking your customer because if you buy a list, it's not going to be good for you because people only want to get an email from somebody that they signed up from. Just like now you're on your phone. You know, I get robo calls and texts all day and they're annoying. And guess what? I never respond to those. I delete those. I mark those as spam. And you don't want to be marked as spam too much because there are laws out there um, every company follows. And if you're sending out too many emails that get marked as spam or come back as bad, your account's going to get banned. So you don't want to do that. So the best way to ensure that doesn't happen is to make sure that you are getting real email addresses from real people. So... Um, going online and paying a service fifty or hundred dollars and buying email list, that's not the way to go. It's easy, but trust me, <laughs> for personal experience, it does not work. You know, I tried that in the past. I bought email list, I went through and I sent them out, and guess what? Pretty much all the emails came back as being um out of date and my account got banned. And I had to start all over again. So once again, do not by email list. Yes, it may be seem easy, but trust me, the way to get your email list is to do it organically. Simply ask for the emails. Do not buy email list. All right, so let's hit continue to tag. And tagging is kind of how you can categorize your email. So we'll just use uh, customer um, as a tag right now. Uh, 
and it continued to match. So once again, you see this? This is why it's so important to make sure you have clean data. And what I was telling you about when you're using um, Excel or Sheets, you want to make sure that when you're in um, that you're naming things correctly. So you're putting in uh, first name and last name in each column. That way, when you upload it, the system can tell who it is and then create a contact for them. So if you go back to MailChimp here, you can see that. You see first name, you say Kim, last name, Cape, email address, uh, K, uh, Cape at Ford.com. Uh, so that's simple. All you need is three fails. If you want, you can get complex, but I do first name, last name, and then email. And one thing I'll show you later, it's so cool having the first name here because when it comes time to send out a, a um, email and we personalize subject line, we're going to use this first name in here. And I'm going to show you how you can uh, insert uh, the first name into your email to make it more uh, personalized and have a better chance to be open. So everything looks good. Let's hit uh, finish import. And let's hit complete. Okay, great. So I uploaded two contacts. Uh, let's view those contacts here. So once again, we can see that each contact um, has been created. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you all can see uh, what I'm talking about. Hold on one second. All right. A little bit bigger, but you can see each contact now has been created. You see, uh, you see Kim, and you see Angie right here. You see the first name, last name, and also the email. So that's great. Now, since we have the list in there, we can move on to the next step. But I want to say one step that I'm not going to show tonight is you want to make sure that you segment your email list. Um, you don't want to send the same email to everybody. And what I mean by that is you have different customers. You have new customers. You have old customers. So once again, let's say we're a car dealership. Um, we have one group of customers that wants sedans and one customer that want SUVs. So that means you don't send emails to the customers that want sedans about the newest um, SUV app. They don't care about that. They care about sedans and cars. So if you're targeting families, don't email them about um, sedans uh, or coupes. No, email them about minivans. Email them about um, about uh, bigger cars. So um, if you have different products or services, when you're asking for those emails, be sure to ask the customer what they want to hear about. So if that customer wants to only buy um, sedans or sport cars, fine. Put them in an email list that's only going to talk about sports cars. And the people that want to hear about SUVs, put them in one email list. This way you get a higher open rate. Because why? When you send the email to the person in the subject line, it's going to say, find out about the newest SUV. And they'll click it. Why? Because they want to hear about SUVs and not about sedans. So that's something very key to have multiple email lists if you can. Uh, Tracy has a question. She says, is there additional fill in Excel file that can help with that? Um, yes and no, Tracy, but the best way to do that is to have a separate email file. And I'll show you that quickly. So if we go back here to MailChimp and we go to uh, back to Audience Dashboard. Let's refresh this. I don't see my contacts. Hold on one second. Yeah, what you can do, uh, if you go back to um, most uh, softwares have this, you can uh, add more contacts. So you can literally have a uh, separate list. So this one Excel file, this can be uh, this can be cars, and we name it uh, we name name it cars. Okay, see it right up here, and then the next email that we create, uh, the next file could be named trucks. So the easy way to do that is when you're uploading it, keep those in separate files. So one file for, for cars, one file for SUVs. And that way, when you upload them separately, uh, in MailChimp or the software you're using, you can name them. Uh, you can name that um, that uh, email list uh, cars 
or you can name that uh, trucks. So that's one way uh, that you can go about that. And there's a whole section here about segment lists, list, but I won't go into that because we have about 15 minutes left. So let's move on to actually creating an email um, a template. So let's start a um, let's start a campaign. And this is a sample campaign I already created, but you can simply uh, edit the name. So let's say this is about cars. So we type in um, let's type in cars. Let's so type in fall savings. And so this email is going to be about fall savings on cars. So that way you can know what it's about. Um, so the first thing it asks you is, who are you sending the email list to? And this is the part where you can add your uh, recipients. So if you click on add recipients, Um, uh, well, I did something wrong. Hold on. Because the audience is not coming up in here. Let's go back to our audience. Hold on one second. Hold on one second, I'm not sure why it's not showing up properly. It was definitely in here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm um, not sure what I did it wrong, but this should be uh, an audience. Strange. Let's try it one more time and I'll just move on. So, website, website, website contacts. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure why that's coming up. Uh, let's go back to PI email and uh, I need to show you how to, how to set that up. Okay, so back to the email template, fall savings. So I'm not sure what's going on, but normally you click here and be able to choose uh, your audience from right there. And you should see the email in there. I'm not sure why it's not working. Um, the next section here, you can personalize uh, the two field. And that's what I was saying. You want to have the uh, Excel file um, labeled correctly. So you can hit first name and that could be in the email subject line. Uh, next, uh, here's the subject line. Let's do a uh, add subject line. So right here, you can say, um, let's say uh, cars <laughs> 20 percent or two percent off <laughs> simple and let's use the name so we say sam so once again using the first name sam is going to make the email seem more personalized and give them a reason to open it um as well so we hit save for that and now we can design an email 
let's do this builder. And I always say to design your email, like don't try to get too cute. So if you can try to be simple to email, because once again, emails that have a lot of pictures and graphics are going to load slow. So you want to send emails that are really simple, that load don't have a ton of pictures. So the email that we designed today is going to be pretty simple because people don't get, what's the word? They don't get sold by a pretty email. That's great. I don't care how it looks. All that I care about opening on my phone is that I can read what it's saying. So focus more on the email um, content and not the design of the email. So we had a logo we put it here. Um, we could type in the headline here. Uh, we I want to add a photo. We could uh, add one here. Um, let's see if I have one. Um, let's use a logo. We can uh, upload a logo um, to it. Simply, sorry you couldn't see that right here. We can put it in the headline again. You can say fall savings. And like I said, these email, um, it's so easy to do this. The editors are really simple, uh, make it really easy for you to do. You can just kind of click and kind of drag what you want to add. Uh, right here, you can add in your your, your the, um, the body of your email. It could be here right here as well. So you can just type in more about fall savings and you can see that in real time. Um, and only possible here, you can change the font, all that stuff. You can make it make it bold, make it a, a, italics. You can uh, center it, all that kind of stuff here. So it's very easy to do. Um, add text button. This would be the call to action button. And like I said, this is very uh, important. So you know we want to link that button to something. So let's link it to, um, let's link it to yahoo.com as a sample. Yahoo.com is where the email will go to. Um, and can you hear the text email? I think we can hear the text email. Yeah. So let's type in learn more. Let's type in see more. And this is what I was saying. This is the call to action. So you want to have a strong call to action. See more, learn more, buy more. Um, and knowing that call to action, but make it a color that stands out. So we'll choose red. That way when you see it, it'll stand out. Um, also, normally email, you can add social media icons to it. So a link to your Facebook, a link to Instagram or um, Twitter as well. Uh, let's go to preview real quick. And it shows us how it will be seen on a desktop. Um, so it looks pretty good. Um, also, how it will be seen on the mobile phone. And this is really important what I say. When you design an email, design it for a mobile phone. Because chances are, the person is not going to view the email on the desktop. They're going to be on their mobile phone. So you only have four, five, six inches to get your point across. So... You don't want to email too long because then you have to scroll and scroll and scroll to, to see it. You don't email that has too many big pictures. Why? Because then it's going to take forever to load. You want to email that's going to load quickly and look good on the mobile phone. So this kind of gives us a preview of how it looks to mobile device. So if we scroll down some, see the logo, fall savings. You can see that the body is very, very short, not too much. You got an image logo there. So... We want to make the image smaller because uh, that's too big for mobile phone. And a nice big um, call to action button that says see more. This way they can take take their dumb, easily hit this button, and it will take them to yahoo.com. Uh, in your case, that would be your website, a sign up form, social media, something like that. So um, that's a very simple way uh, to send the email. Uh, the next step um, is uh, sending. Um, actually scheduling a time for your email to be sent. Um, once again, sending emails, times really varies. Get to know uh, your customers, but I like sending emails uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays around 10 a.m. Those are good times for me, but it really depends on your customers and what you're trying to do. If your customers are working all day and they're at home at night, then yeah, try to send email in the afternoon as well. So uh, it really depends, but... Once again, that was kind of a quick tutorial because we don't have a lot of time 
on uh, sending an email. So we have about six minutes left. Does anybody have any questions about email marketing? We had a few from Tracy and Kizzy made some comments, but anybody else have any questions about email marketing? Uh, let's pause for a few minutes and I'll answer those questions. Once again, I like MailChimp because it's, it's free for them to contact. So most people fall under to the contacts. Um, it's easy to use. Uh, it really is and easy to send. Um, so there's constant contact. There's MailChimp. There's um, BlueSend. There's all kind of companies that do email marketing um, out there. But it's really about finding a software that one is in your press range and has the features uh, th that, that you want um, as well. But any questions uh, about email marketing? Uh, Tracy says, this is great. I've been hesitant, hesitant about email software, but now I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm glad I helped you get over that that hurdle, but um, just to get inside. And you know what, Tracy, too, the, your first email that you send, um, don't send it to um, uh, real people. Send it to yourself first and test it, see how it feels. And I'll show you that right real quick. So. Normally, somewhere on your uh, email software, there's the option where you can send a test email and definitely do that. Even if you're a pro at sending email, trust me, there's always a mistake you don't see, a misspelling you don't see. So before you send the email out to all your customers, send it to yourself. So you can click here, send email. Uh, you can type in uh, your uh, email address. And uh, it'll send an email to you, a test email to you, so you can see uh, how it looks. And be sure to proof of the email uh, again and again because once again, I've done it many times. <laughs> There's always a mistake in the email, so if you can uh, send that test email to yourself uh, and view that before it goes out. Um, show my email. All right, this is my email address. Don't read my email. Let's see if it came through. <laughs> Uh, yeah, right here. So it came through. Uh, so it says uh, test email it says Sam cars 2% off. So now in my Gmail, if we click on that, we can see how it looks and it, it looks good. Somebody looked on the editors. So um, no misspellings, false savings, text is fine. Look fine. Test your links and everything. Click on the links, make sure they work because once again, there's always a mistake in your email, so always be sure to send a test email to yourself. So, um, yeah, Tracy, just keep that in mind before you send out uh, your first email. So, let's wrap up. Uh, so, once again, uh, this webinar, I hope it's been helpful. If it has been helpful, uh, give me a five or hit the like button and let me know uh, that you have uh, enjoyed this webinar because, once again, just like email marketing, digital marketing is all about the customer, you, and what you want. So I want to know if you uh, liked what I had to say. If so, hit the like button or give me a five in the comment box and let me know. Also, uh, this webinar is being recorded. So if you're on Facebook, uh, YouTube, um, LinkedIn, wherever you are, if you missed anything I said, after this is done, you can go back and you can watch this webinar and past webinars and learn more about digital marketing. Also, if you want more training on, on anything, uh, the U.S. Black Chambers has a lot of training. So if you go to the website, usblackchambers.org, backslash webinars, you can sign up for more webinars and learn about more topics uh, as, as well. So once again, thank you. And to end things off, I'm playing a video for you. Um, upcoming um, in October is the Buy Black Conference presented by the U.S. Black Chambers. Um, if you want to learn more about digital marketing, how to grow your business, this is the event for you. So um, I'll play the video for you. And if it sounds good to you, be sure to sign up um, for the event because tickets are going fast. So thanks for your time and uh, have a good night. Hello, my name is Ron Busby Sr. I'm the president and CEO of the U.S. Black Chambers, Inc., the national voice for black business. Not only do we advocate for black-owned businesses and issues that shape policy, but we also connect and equip black-owned businesses for greater growth and success. A major growth and connection opportunity for you and your business 
is this year's Buy Black Conference. It's being held this year at the MGM Grand Hotel, October the 13th through the 15th, 2021. This year, whether you attend online or in person, you can expect to attend sessions that will help you grow, help you understand emerging industries, hear from industry leaders on how to navigate race as well as business. Mark your calendars for October the 13th through the 15th and register now. In person, space is limited and virtual space is filling up quickly. So go to buyblackconference.com today and I'll see you at the Buy Black Conference soon.